This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Another delay could be coming for the trial in the case of missing South Bay mom Maya Miliete. It had already been delayed until August 24th after her husband Larry, an accused killer, Larry Miliete, had issues funding his defense. Miliete's new lawyers signed on in October. In February, they told a judge they would not be ready for trial by late August. Today, a judge will decide whether to accommodate that request. A hearing will be held in about an hour. Former San Diego Padres president and CEO Larry Lachino has died. The MLB confirmed he died today at the age of 78, surrounded by family. While his family hasn't said how he died, we know he survived three previous cancer scares. Lachino was the Padres president and CEO from 1995 to 2001. He was inducted into the Padres Hall of Fame alongside Ted Leitner in 2022. Talks are set to begin tonight about a homeless encampment ban in National City. The ban would make it illegal to camp on public property if shelter beds are available and at all times near schools, transit hubs and waterways. The annual point in time count shows the city's homeless population has been steadily growing. The city believes the increase is due in part to San Diego putting its ban into effect. If National City's ban is approved, there would be a 30 day grace period, then violators would be subject to a misdemeanor citation and or arrest. So we need to have a partnership between the businesses and our police officers and try to help them so their businesses run smooth. You know, they're here and we want to see them thrive in our community. So having officers that can really dedicate a lot of their time to helping the businesses would be very beneficial for our city. The council will do a first reading of the ordinance tonight. That meeting starts at 6 o'clock at City Hall. More relief is on the way for victims of the January floods. Today, two local real estate trade organizations announced another $1.1 million in grant money. NBC 7's Audra Stafford spoke with homeowners in Southcrest who say they'll take all the help they can get. It's been more than two months since the devastating January floods and most, if not all of the people who live here along Beta Street still haven't been able to move back into their homes. The storm sent several feet of water rushing through streets and homes, destroying cars and leading many to be rescued. Recovery has been tough and expensive, but today the announcement that more relief is on the way. The Greater San Diego Association of Realtors and Pacific Southwest Association of Realtors are now offering more than $1 million from the Realtors Relief Foundation to help flood victims with recovery efforts. Eligible homeowners and renters could receive a check equal to the amount of their monthly housing payment up to $2,900. Part of our mission, of course, is to promote home ownership in general and to protect homes and, and housing rights. And so, of course, with this horrible event that took place, we wanted to make sure that we have the opportunity to try and help our housing communities. I spoke to a few of the neighbors who told me they're definitely interested in applying. We met Harold a couple days after the flooding. He lives in a duplex and rents out the other side, which, as you can see, was destroyed. He says trying to make it livable again has been a tremendous challenge, and he'll take all the help he can get. I apply with FEMA, but, you know, they give me crumbs on the table. Yeah, you know, it's not enough. But I guess whatever's donated is appreciated. We are the needy, not the greedy. Applications for the grants are available online. We have a link on NBC7.com. From Southcrest, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hi, Monica. As we head through the afternoon, it's going to be really nice. Actually, a little bit milder than yesterday. Upper 60s to near 70 at the coast and sunny. Inland valleys around the mid to low 70s. Mountains about the low 60s. As we head into tomorrow, it's going to be, again, a little bit milder than today. So beautiful weather over the next couple days. Enjoy it. Thursday, we cool down. Our next storm approaches, and that'll give us a rain chance later in the day. Friday, it's going to be rainy and breezy. Also very chilly, but this does look to dry out for the weekend. And Friday, we also are looking at snow in the mountains. Wow, again. Okay, thanks, Sheena. Coming up, neighbors in Carlsbad say their mail has been disappearing from their mailboxes. It's a widespread problem across the country. The U.S. Postal Service knows how to fix it, but they haven't. We take a look at why coming up next. Stay with us. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, getting results. San Diego families promised an affordable home. We said, you know, finally, we're going to have a place where we can live in. Giving thousands to a man who said their money would also help homeless veterans. I feel sorry for the people he lied to. Now, after our investigation, there's a warrant out for his arrest, helping San Diego families finally get justice. I really, really appreciate your work. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 responds, fighting for you. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. A Carlsbad police officer is still in the hospital with major head injuries after he was attacked by someone with a skateboard, and it's not clear if he was specifically targeting police. This was late Friday night on Carlsbad Village Drive. Investigators say the officer's patrol car's window was smashed by a rock. As he inspected the damage, police say Kyle McCord attacked the officer. The officer fired three shots but did not hit anyone. McCord was captured a couple of blocks away. We checked FBI data and incidents like this are rare in this area. Neighbors, you can imagine, were surprised. Scary. Of course it is. It was that person, I mean, he was either out for just a policeman or he could have been out just to hit anybody, you know, you or I. Investigators say it's unclear if McCord was the one who threw a rock at the officer's car. McCord is set to face a judge later this week. We're learning more about how investigators were able to track down and arrest four suspects in a burglary at a Poway gun range last week. The suspects were captured on March 25th in Las Vegas, about a day after they stole two cars and broke into Poway weapons and gear. They used one car to ram into the gun shop entrance and were in and out in about four minutes. They stole at least 78 rifles and handguns in that time. Data from automatic license plate readers helped San Diego sheriffs determine one of the cars was stolen in Lake Elsinore and driven into North Las Vegas later that morning. 35 of those guns were located in Las Vegas with 43 still missing. The four suspects will be in federal court a little over a week from now. Homeowners in the Bressy Ranch neighborhood of Carlsbad say thieves swiped entire blocks worth of envelopes and packages from their community mailboxes. It was really important. It was over $100 in medication. Feels like there's somebody out there that has free access to lock boxes in the entire city. NBC7 investigates dug into mail theft data and discovered that San Diego County is seeing the same surge in postal crime as the rest of the country. A recent audit of the USPS also found that many post offices didn't properly track which mail carriers took out special master keys and hundreds of missing keys were never reported. While Carlsbad neighbors believe a missing or lost key is connected to their case, USPS won't confirm that to NBC7. Critics also link mail theft increases to changes in Postal Service enforcement. So they made a policy choice to bench the Postal Police Force during a postal crime wave. Letter carriers are having guns stuck in their face every day. They're being robbed. And the downstream effects of those robberies are very serious. Identity theft, banking fraud, check fraud. So we have a problem. A new bill in Congress could send $7 billion to the USPS to upgrade security. NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. For today, beautiful weather, a little bit milder, upper 60s at the coast, mostly sunny, low 70s inland, beautiful weather for the mountains and deserts. Tomorrow will be a little milder than today, still dry. Thursday, we cool down big time because we have a storm approaching, late shower chance. Friday, we have rain, wind, chilly temperatures, chance of a thunderstorm, but so far it looks like we should be clearing out for the weekend, which is good news. Mountains by Friday, though, big change in temperatures with snow in the mountains, but drying up for the weekend. Thank you, Sheena. More coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.